All right, guys, a certain amount of guilt goes along with this video because I got this from 3-Step uh, over a year ago. And when I looked at I tried to pick it. And when I found how difficult it was to pick this lock, because it has incredibly strong springs, I set it aside. But I just didn't have enough time to, you know, figure it out, make a tensioner, blah, 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 all the stuff that goes along with it. But now with this coronavirus, I got a little extra time. Thought this might be a great time and also to show you some some further developments that have happened in that in this last year, a year and a half. Um, on this guy, it works beautifully. And this actually comes with a neat story. This is stamped with the Pennsylvania Central Railroad. And these guys went out of business, I think it was 1976. And they were eventually consolidated by the U.S. government into Conrail, which I, I think is still around. Um, for those of you who are interested about the history of the Penn Central, there's actually a book about it called The Wreck of the Penn Central that talks about some of the successes and failures. Doesn't talk about this lock, but talks about the history of the railroad. So let's get back to this lock. Stop flapping your lips, Bill. Um, on the key, kind of a weird key. There is a central shaft here, and we got a little cut right there. Now, when we look inside of here, it's shaped, the keyway is kind of odd. It's shaped like the number, the numeral nine, with a little hole right in the middle for that central shaft. And then I'll take the lock cam and stick it down in there. I think you might be able to see there's a, a steel ring around that shaft. And that's one of the things that kind of drove me crazy about these ad legs. Um, there's a cut in the key there. And what that is for is to prevent you from taking a wire, shoving it against the back wall, and then tensioning the lock. It's kind of an anti-picking thing. And after I messed around bent wires for many, many hours and broke them all because of the incredibly strong springs in these locks, I gave up, set this thing aside. This one does work beautifully. Very strong spring, as I said. Watch that thing pop out of there. And when you look in there, you can actually see the very strong spring that kind of throws everything out. And you can even see the levers down the side of there. There's a prong that goes through that hole. So again, you're not going to be shimming these. These are really great locks used on railroad switches. All right. Um, let's talk about something else. Now, notice the shape of this. It looks like the number nine. Well, I thought about just making a, a uh, tensioner that would fit all of these. But then another one rolled into the shop. Um, this one is a little different. This one is by the Erie Railroad. Again, pretty good shape. Nice key. It's got that same cut. This dude is really well worn. But when you take a look at the keyway on this one, it doesn't look, it looks like a mirror image of the number nine. And in addition to that, when you compare it to the other one, not only is it a mirror image, but look at the difference in diameter of that central shaft. So Making a key or a tensioner that would fit all of these didn't seem very likely, particularly when, oh, by the way, this one also works beautifully. If I get that come down in there. Particularly when a third one rolled in, and I thought, you know, now I really got to get on this. I need to come up with a key that'll fit all of these. And then I've kind of flipped this aside. This one did not come with a key, and very cool, March 20th, 1920, Pennsylvania Rail Yard, I believe that is. Um, flip it open, and yet there's a third style keyway. And this is more traditional. All right, so I thought, I got three of these things now. They all have that same ring. Let me just, I've got keys for those two. So rather than mess up a working lock that has a key, that particularly this old, let's attack this guy. I'm going to make a tensioner that will fit around that steel ring. I'm going to machine it out of a hunk of aluminum, because I kept breaking wires. I hope the aluminum is going to be tough enough to where... I can tension it, and then I can use one of my thickest wires. Perhaps we can pick this guy open. I'm sure it's been opened since 1920, but maybe since the 70s or thereabouts. It'll be the first time it's been opened since then. So let's give it a shot. All right, guys, this turned out to be the perfect project for those times when you have plenty of time, like during this shutdown. Um, this has taken all day. <laughs> I have. This is one of the prototypes. This is the third prototype. And of course, it keeps breaking off near the tip. I, I had a couple of them break off inside. I had to shake it out. This is the latest one. Now, what I've done is I've reduced the diameter of that counter bore a little bit. It still fits. I've just checked it before I turned on the camera. So it still fits. It's a little bit tight, but I had to do that to give the wall, the, leave the walls thick enough to support this tip. I'm hoping this one does not break off. Um, as you can see, I, I counter milled it here to uh, get around that anti-picking disc that they put in the back of there. And then I also cut off the back of it. So you can see I'm only going after the tensioning disc right there. Everything else is removed. Here's what one of the other keys looks like. So I'm just going after that very tip. 
The other thing I had to do, because I left the diameter of this really wide, I had to cut a groove here. I still, um, it's as you can see, it's starting to break through in that counter, uh, counter bore. Um, I couldn't go any deeper, so I have to use a medium wire. That's the only one that will fit. A wide wire does not fit, so I'm hoping that this wire doesn't break. All right, I did check it. It does fit, and that is as far as I've gotten so far. So now let's take the wire and just kind of tuck him in there, fold him up. And now I'm going to take my thumb and just, I'm just going to hold him in place as I kind of rotate this. Now what I'm trying to do here is find a spring-loaded tensioning disc. And that seems to be not him. That is absolutely solid. So there's something immovable object in there. So I'm just going to feel around. That's the immovable object. That's the immovable object. So let me shove him all the way in. I'm thinking right, right there. I think that's him. I'm going to reach around the camera now and hopefully we will get this dude open. Nope. I have too much tension on this thing, it feels like, because nothing is moving. That wire, I'm literally twisting it 90 degrees, and nothing in there is giving. I'm going to go at a slightly different angle. Come on. All right, let's shove him all the way back. And that's a movable object right there. He's not going any further. That feels like it might be him. Let's try that one. He's a little, it allows me to rotate a little bit further. Oh, there's one. Either that or the tip of my wire broke off, but he's still spinning. He's still grabbing. Come on. Here's another one. I felt a little give on the core. Let's turn it. I'm, I don't want to break that thing. Hold on. There we go. Look at that. Nothing to it. That's probably the first time he's been open in a long time. Nobody's been in your keyhole for a while, huh? Anyway, guys, all day to come up with a, a one-time use tensioning tool. I can't believe it. But after a year, a year and a half, however long it's, I've had uh, three steps lock, I'm glad to finally <laughs> get this one out of the naughty bucket. Three-step, you've been very patient. You have not sent me any hate mail. I appreciate that. So in return, I'm going to give you this lock. I'm going to obviously return your lock with its key. And I'm also going to throw in this other one that I bought complete with the key. The one from, where was he from? The Erie. I think it was from Erie Railroad. Anyway, guys, appreciate your time. Stay safe, stay legal, stay healthy. Thanks again, three-step.